This episode of The Smoke Pit brought to you by The Nut Ruck by Arbor Arms. The tactical fanny pack for your nuts and your butts. Check it out at arborarms.com. Tell them The Smoke Pit sent you. Yut. Welcome to The Smoke Pit. Hey. What up, though? Back for another fan-fucking-tastic episode of Ya Boys. <laughs> well, it's called The Smoke Pit. Hey, also, I have a question. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the uh, Instagram page got DM'd a question from one of the fans. Yes. Not uncommon, but I thought it was an interesting question. So, the question posed as such, who would you rather have write a breakup song about you? Taylor Swift, Halsey, or Adele? Thoughts go. So my my first instinct would to be say Halsey, um, just uh, empirically based on numbers. Sure. Because like uh, Adele and Taylor Swift, they I I I don't have the exact date on this as I am not a sixteen year old girl, mm. but I feel like Adele and Taylor Swift get more radio plays. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. so more people would hear it if it was the other two. And then, like, Halsey's thing would kind of be, like, catchy, and then it would go away, but, like, the the Adele and the Taylor Swift, I feel like those have more staying power. Sure, 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 sure. AJ? I'd go with Adele. Okay, why? Because, well, Taylor Swift, t- Taylor Swift would sound fake as hell, mm. because she'd be like, oh my god, nobody notices me because I wear regular clothes. Bitch, you're, like, six six foot two, <laughs> tall, blonde hair, blue eyed, and gorgeous. <laughs> Don't pretend like, d- it's fake. I like how you started with bitch or gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the dumpster and let me love you. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> and then Halsey, like, don't get me wrong. I, I like I like Halsey. But yeah, I love I, Halsey. I feel like every song she's ever done that's had some kind of dude influence. Yeah. Like either the dude's on it and he's trash. Yeah. Or the song is kind of very much like sixteen year old girl, you know, crying emo in the corner. And that's not that's not the vibe I've got. The vibe I've got is like thirty five year old man, like eating sadness burritos on his couch. <laughs> like that's that's more the vibe I would go if if that was my situation. That was an app vibe, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what about you, Mike? I would say it's a good uh, split here because I would go with Taylor Swift. Okay. Because of number you one, would. she's notorious. I mean, she'll give me clout, which is huge. She's notoriously <laughs> uh, known for. <laughs> I just I want that blue check so bad. Uh, <laughs> She'd give me clout. Write your congressman. That's right. Especially in Indiana and mm-hmm. ask why Mike fucking Sensi is not verified. Why aren't you verified? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I really don't. Did you send him a picture of your driver's license? I have, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you send him a picture of your, uh, did you send him nudes? I did, and then they blocked my account. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to start over. I had to start over, that's right. No, it's not, okay. Anyway. Then they deleted it because they thought it was an impersonation <laughs> account. <laughs> right. The only catfish account they've deleted. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, Taylor Swift, because clout, obviously, blue check, hit me up. Uh, and then also she's notoriously known for writing these like iconic breakup songs about people, but then like the dudes will come out and be like, she was the worst. So it's more shifted to Taylor Swift is just the worst. So if you get broken up with Taylor Swift, whether you dump her, she dumps you and a song comes out about it, everyone takes your side automatically, which would be nice for my ego. Yeah. So, um, I, I will ask the, uh, the probing question. Does that mean you are also in a relationship with them or do they just write the breakup song about you? I would assume there was a relationship of some kind, yeah. Because then you have to ask, like, you know, who of the three would you rather date? Halsey. Halsey. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. I'd marry Halsey right now. Yeah, because I, I, I wouldn't want to, like, you know, be on uh, People Magazine with Taylor Swift and then fucking John Mayer slides in my DMs and he's like, yeah, I had that first. Yeah, like, I feel, I'm going to fight you now. I feel like John Mayer can slide <laughs> in any man in America's DMs and say, I had that first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. but, yeah, but John Mayer can't fight. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to. He's fucking. <laughs> That's the thing. He plays his he plays his guitar, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, "I don't want to fight anymore." Yeah, because what's his face? Uh, uh, Chappelle did that did that gag with John Mayer one time, right? That's right. Yep. So here's the, here's another question. Did he did the fan that wrote this in? That was his specific three, right? Yeah. I would wager if I if I could pick anybody. Okay. Amy Lee Hartzler. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, hers would be a little more uh, epic. I feel you know exactly. What I, mean? so. I feel like that's the level of ridiculousness and over the top that I would want to go for. So you'd want like your face to be at Hot Topic and shit, because <laughs> that's where that demographic goes. I, if yeah. I can get that, like, uh, call me when I'm sober. When she's like, like coming down from the ceiling in like the the the. the like but, red and black yeah. checkered outfit, and yeah, like yeah. there's all the girls with the weird masks on around. Yeah. That's the level of like 
Fuck you, but I want. <laughs> I assume <laughs> I assume when you nap on your couch, that's what you dream about anyway. That is 100% what I dream that about. That makes sense. Yeah, because um, uh, a throwback to one of our previous episodes where I, I had to apologize to Mike, and he got his, uh, his legion of followers to DM me, and they're like, wake up, Dan, and I was like wake me up and then yeah, like funny, wake yeah. me up <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and a bunch of them played along too yeah, yeah it was good <laughs> oh my god have you guys seen the the one where it's the guy in the goofy costume oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, doing yeah, the yeah. goofy voice yeah. but it's like wake me yeah. up and <laughs> chat I, 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 I can't wake up inside <laughs> that, was a, that was a solid goofy <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um I, I would definitely say that um, it it it'd be kind of hard to have like a breakup song because like I don't I don't think I have the platform to like fire back at anyone right so it would it would have to be someone that like if anybody in this room has a platform to fire back at you yeah exactly yeah but still but like Taylor Swift gets more likes on a picture than I have total followers so, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah but then again Taylor Swift like steals a lot of her pictures so she steals her pictures. Allegedly, she's, please don't sue us, Taylor. <laughs> she's she's stolen an album covers from other artists. One to oh, do. I, see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I thought you meant like her pictures on her Instagram. She stole them. I was like, from who? They're of her. <laughs> from Mike Sensi. <laughs> <laughs> Send me money. From the ones she sent me. That's right. Send me money. The ones you took out in the bush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So of the um, bush. <laughs> do you do you feel like we have answered that fan's uh, question? I fucking hope so because I'm over it to completion. <laughs> <laughs> As I am one to always uh, not give a shit about. Yeah, not give a shit after completion. Let's move on. (laughs) Okay, so another question, um, or rather another series of uh, rapid DMs that we got from people Mm -hmm. was apparently some fucking hipster stole AJ's idea for Hordash. Yes. Some cunt owes me a lot of royalties. Royalties. All the royalties. And even their name sucks. What was it? uh, Boober Eats? Yeah, Boober Eats. Boogaloo, what? So the official headline from from uh, Port, uh, a uh, Portland, Oregon newspaper. Of is, course, it's Portland. Yeah, of co- I mean they have big boobs in Portland, from what I hear. They have a lot of free trade stuff in Portland. <laughs> anyway, a Southwest, uh, <laughs> a Southwest Portland strip club has given out of work dancers a new way to make money: topless food delivery, known as Boober Eats. All right then. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the headline. I'm not going to go into. The I feel like headline. Hordash is a much better name. Mm-hmm. I feel like Hordash is a much better name, and the product is better because they don't <laughs> have to show up topless. Right. They just have to at some point be topless, and then eventually leave, just like Mike likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no one staying over, <laughs> <laughs> except for your one true love. That's right. Has any, has any of you all seen the show Prodigal Son? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah you made me watch a few of those uh, episodes. It's it's pretty good. I, I always picture, not all the other stuff, but the one thing about that show that I like yeah. is that because of his massive trauma and PTSD, every night the main character goes to bed, he has to shackle himself to his bed because his night terrors are so bad, he might fling himself out of the right, window. Right, that's right, yeah, yeah. I pictured that as being the, one of the reasons Mike makes women leave. Because <laughs> I have to shackle myself. Because <laughs> he has to yeah. shackle himself to his bed. Yeah, because no, they're always like, oh, you have like a sleep at me machine or something awkward. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's 100% it. it takes yeah, out a it. samurai sword and shackles himself <laughs> to bed. A bit of a throwback to our, uh, I think it was season one, where we, we talked about a guy in our platoon who had the night terrors. Uh, he <laughs> He's had coming a right for us. So not getting to, into too much detail, um, or making too many um, offensive uh, accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he had a roommate, and uh, in, in the Marine Corps barracks, like it's basically a studio apartment with a pair of bunk beds. And he had, uh, to his credit, he was having a dream that his roommate was being assaulted by some demon or monster. Wow. So with his night terrors, he gets out of bed, <laughs> jumps up into the top rack, and starts whipping his roommate's ass. And he's like, I'll save you. I'll save you. <laughs> and the guy just wakes up. Imagine that. You wake up to someone beating your ass while screaming, I'll save you. How many times I've come to that? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you that for the sake of making sure not to offend anybody, Dan yeah. dramatically changed that story. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. You, when we start our OnlyFans, we're gonna have to tell the actual story. <laughs> it's, we, we it's keep so teasing bad. this OnlyFans. <laughs> it's I'm I'm you know what I'm gonna be doing it right now while wow. we're, I'm setting us up at OnlyFans. Wow, account. wow, wow. That's not how I say wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so like, um, that that's a bit of a of a derision because somebody at this table uh, had some of the best sex of their life, and all they could muster afterwards was wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we we won't say whomst until we start the uh, the OnlyFans, but that's, that's right. not that that actually Owen, uh, Owen Wilson stole that from us. That's true. He owes us royalties. Another who owes us royalties. We should be swimming in money right now. We really should, and be. we have no money. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while AJ is creating that OnlyFans, uh, another question that was posed to us is, um, how's everybody holding up during the quarantine? <laughs> Uh, I'm all right, man. I get, I definitely get cabin fever. Me and Lucy have come throw hands every other day now, but, uh, it's, it's, it's all right. Um, 
it, it's we've talked about before but it's like obviously me being a natural introvert I like there's nothing more than i love just locking myself in my apartment for the weekend just binging and eating po- poorly and you know just being a slob all around but now that it's like mandated i can't even go to work like i can't do anything it's driving me crazy yeah aj how are you holding up I gotta say, I fucking love being quarantined. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, my my unit is very good about they they we get a call or a text every day, a couple sure. times a day to make sure everybody's okay. Um, we legitimately do have it. I didn't know we had the ability to do telework until this happened, and they were like, "Oh, we're all teleworking for the foreseeable future." And I was nice. Like, we're doing what now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they keep us honest. Like, we keep a schedule, and we have stuff we have to do during the working hours and stuff, which is great. But I can do my job and I don't have to drive as much to get to work and back. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's been I've, my house is cleaner than it's been in a long time. As where I am the opposite, where the more time I have to clean, the less I do it. That's true. You're a very <laughs> dirty man, <laughs> filthy, filthy monkey. So I, I think I'm holding up pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit difficult because you know I, I'm a bit of a, a gypsy at heart and I like to travel <laughs> right. and you know play my tambourine on street corners yeah, and steal wallets and cell phones, swindle yeah. people out of money. <laughs> uh, back to uh, my uh, my my gypsy roots. Yeah, for sure. Ancestry.com. What up? <laughs> it just said gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I'm holding up pretty good. It's it's definitely a lot easier when you know that you can um, call people. I mean, it's not like Mike ever answers, but the, the fact that I can call him. I, there's nothing more than I love looking at my phone, seeing a missed call from Dan and not calling back. <laughs> <laughs> or like or looking at me and seeing my face pop up on the, uh, the, the, yeah. the call screen yeah. and then hitting decline. Yeah, and I'm just, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then two hours later, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have done eating all the wings I had ordered, and I was like, all right, I'll ask him what do you want. <laughs> <laughs> now that I can feel my tongue again mm-hmm. from the hot sauce the hot sauce they're spicy they're spicy they're spicy. So spicy Ooh, you know what else is spicy what's that the uh seasoning from grill your ass off the cajun one okay i mean it is spicy Wait, but right on it. some butthole <laughs> they have a cajun seasoning they yeah. do is it in this house i think it is we're making food with it tonight because i must judge it <laughs> oh that's fair yeah and you're like if it wasn't made in a bathtub i don't want it <laughs> if mama Odie didn't fucking sit there and have to do the thing with the paddle. I don't want none of that shit up <laughs> in my house. No, sir. All right, cool. And so the <laughs> last question we're going to answer from the fans, because we're tired of you. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I am. <laughs> is uh, as soon as all this passes over, what's your um, what's, what's your dream destination that you want to go to? Now that you've been denied the freedom of uh, traveling mm. around and seeing the sights, where do you want to go to? Yeah. Um, for me, just uh, I keep doing the click thing. I'm so sorry. Um, for me, probably just a local dive bar, just settle in amongst the, uh, the other animals who live around me and just sit in silence and drink in a smoky room. Okay. Cause that is my heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that would be in Virginia beach, not somewhere else. Anywhere, anywhere there's hooligans who want to sit quietly in a dark bar and drink. Okay. Kind of my favorite place. Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, uh, Mike and I had, uh, um, uh, tampered with the idea briefly about starting a bar somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's still on the table. You know what I yeah. mean? Why not? Well, because what it was is I, I had a conversation with uh, a friend of ours from Australia, and she was a special forces medic, mm-hmm. and she was like, oh, yeah, that'd be super cool if you guys started a bar, and I could be like the waitress and like scam people out of money and yeah, stuff. She- and I was like, all right, cool, we'll start a bar. Yeah, yeah. And then she messaged you, <laughs> and the response that I got was just like, hey, Dan, stop fucking telling people we're going to start a bar and we're going to hire them. <laughs> well, she was like hitting me with an application and stuff. I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> she, These are my references, and yeah, it's yeah. me. Yeah. Can, can I say her name? <laughs> yeah, sure. I think Kirby would make an excellent bartender. She'd make a great bartender. That's yeah. not the issue. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying if you wanted to open a bar, like you could do worse than having Kirby being behind the bar because you know, especially where you're at. If we did it down in the Norfolk, like fucking yeah, 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 down in the base area where you have a lot of military personnel. Oh, for sure. And then they go in there, and there's an Australian chick in there with that yeah. with that accent. Yeah, yeah, they'd throw money at her, and then she'd give him a handful of these. That's a really good point. And uh, he's throwing his middle fingers for those listening. <laughs> not a, not a hand job. There's this videos. Is not, there is there a, videos, AJ? There not is a videos. Chlamydia Mike. hand job. Mm-hmm. What is the from chlamydia? koalas? Wait, wait. What's a chlamydia hand job? Do you listen to the show at all? Well, yeah. it's a, if it's a koala clip, it's gonna be like the three. No, no. The, see, the key to a, a chlamydia koala hand job is that you have to burn the koala onto a uh, dirty towel yeah. and then you said towel to clean Mike's penis after a hand job. Ugh, so graphic even though it actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Do you not listen you not to listen this show? I do not the part. Okay. 
there was a whole episode called Koala Handjob. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I just don't remember anybody rubbing Mike down with koala semen. That's a, that was what? the whole no. premise. Of- it wasn't koala semen. <laughs> yeah. That's not what he said. He's- you heard it here, folks. It was koala semen. <laughs> That's right. Mike fucks koalas. No. Listen, she cleaned me with a towel that had been used to swaddle a koala. It still had hair on it. That seems perfectly fair. That's how you get chlamydia, though. I didn't get it, but I was I'm very I'm pretty sure if someone was going to give somebody chlamydia, that koala's got more to worry about from you than the other <laughs> way around. It's true. That koala's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so AJ, what's your, uh, what's your dream destination? When you, when you picture yourself staring out into the scenic overview, where are you at? Scotland. Okay. 100%. I've been to a lot of places in a lot of countries and uh, soft flex, but I will say that <laughs> fucking Scotland is by far my favorite place. Uh, Edinburgh was was a was one of my favorite cities uh, that I ever been to. Uh, partially because your dreamy eyes were there for me to stare into. Ra ra. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you. Here's an interesting story, and this will only take a second. Yeah, uh, I love it. <laughs> we were we were at Edinburgh Castle, and every every day at 1300, they fire a cannon, right? Yeah. And it's to let all the ships. It's like an old war, war, World War One custom, and it's to let all the ships know, like the ship's captains know. It's exactly 1300. Everybody can synchronize their watches, right? Oh, okay. Right. So, but they still do it as a tradition because, like, the only time I think they didn't do it were during uh, certain parts of World War One and certain parts of World War Two. There was like a there was a, a veteran's home right next to it, and they didn't want to like freak everybody the fuck out and give them PTSD <laughs> yeah, any worse sure. than they already had. Yeah, yeah. So, like, all right, maybe we'll chill it with the cannons. But we go up there, and there's this Royal Marine who's a Royal Marine sergeant, and he's in charge of, you know, fire the cannons, mm. and then they uh, fucking yank the thing, and the thing, boom, right? <laughs> right? Cannons, yeah. And he's standing there after the thing's done, and all of a sudden this little hatch opens up, and a private runs out. And he's in, he's not, the, the Royal Marine's in his ceremonial dress, r- dress blues. The, the private's in, like, his shittiest camis, <laughs> and he just comes hut-hutting out of the fucking thing and starts cleaning the, cleaning the cannon. And we're like, fuck is this all about? He goes... I'm a sergeant. Clearly, I'm not going to clean my own cannon. That's what, <laughs> that's what this fucking dirty private's for. I like that we high fived. We high fived each other and then high fived him, and we all left. That's as Mike vibes all over it. <laughs> He's like, I'm a, I'm a petty officer, first class. I'm not going to clean my own cannon. Goddamn he right. shot his cannon all over the place. Then he had some dirty private come clean it up for him. Some dirty Australian private. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I think the, uh, the, the merits of going to somewhere you've been and you know, it's nice and it's comforting mm-hmm. and you like to return, uh, of the Mac. Yeah. If you hey, will. Hey, hey, yeah. I love hey. that song so much. Uh, versus going somewhere new that could potentially suck. Uh, but you know, you haven't been to, so I, I, I kind of feel split on that. I think if I could go anywhere. I would really like to go to Japan uh, during the Cherry Blossoms um, oh, the festival, festival. yeah, because yeah, yeah. we have that here in D.C., and uh, they, they literally had to blockade off a whole bunch of parts to keep tourists from going there yeah. when they're like, hey, fuckheads, stay home, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to kill all the World War II remaining veterans yeah, yeah. <laughs> by spreading this disease. So they yeah, had to block only, it off. There's only six of them left, all right? Yeah. Have some fucking respect. <laughs> Have some fucking respect. Yeah. Spare parts, bud. You yeah. fucking spare parts, bud. <laughs> so I think that going to Japan. <laughs> I um, do that better than you. <laughs> Uh, going to Japan and seeing that uh, would would be quite nice. Yes, it would be very lovely. Yeah, and yeah. if I uh, if I had to go somewhere that I've already been, <laughs> which I'm assuming you've been to lots of smoky dive bars, most of them, yes, most of them, yes, yeah. just generally. I love them. Like if you don't have a picture of Mike Sensi pass out in a booth, what what are you even fucking doing with your bar? They're not making a profit. No, obviously not. <laughs> I think out of all the places that I've been, I want to go back to Roatan and go diving with uh, Warfighter Scuba. Okay, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very solid company, very cool thing to do. I, I, I fucks with it. Yeah, and you know, there, there is something um, extremely relaxing about being like 10 stories underwater and mm. seeing like an eagle ray or a sea turtle go by. Yeah. But it's also very fucking stressful when your tank starts bubbling more than it should be and you're like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, or you get caught in a in a coral reef tunnel uh, yeah, yeah. underwater at night. Well, you're very thick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thick Dan, with a Q. <laughs> you're you're a big dude. Like you probably suck a lot of oxygen, right? Yeah, I do. I really do, honestly. Like big dudes, and and I'll throw this out there. There's five factors that influence the duration of most oxygen tanks. What you got? Users' weight, users' respiration rate, physical condition, amount of training and familiarity with the device, and the amount of work required. 
Fail. I failed all those categories. <laughs> and that and that's it. It's like, not even a pass or fail, but I failed. He was like he was like about to jump in the water and he's like, I need a new tank. They're like, What do you mean? Is yours not working? He goes, I used all the air already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing I will say is climbing out of the water with all your gear on after you've been um what we like to say in the biz, thinning. <laughs> Oh, Go yeah, fuck yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for for an hour or whatever, like climbing out of the water, like you realize how fucking heavy you are because you um like a, a lot of people's um f- like a uh, rig will have a flotation device that kind of helps you regulate your buoyancy because it's very difficult to find uh like perfect natural buoyancy because you know you don't want to be like floating up or floating down. You kind of want to just you know stay the course. And so you can put air in or take out to kind of find that sweet spot like Mike likes. Your buoyancy control device or BCD. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. And um, so, you know, once you once you do that, like you don't really have to fuck with it and you're more or less weightless. Yeah, yeah. You know, not not physically weightless, but you get the the uh, the appearance of feeling weightless, weightless. Uh, And so when you're climbing out of the water back into the boat and you're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big son of a bitch. <laughs> Plus, a lot of people don't realize this because it doesn't take a lot. Of, it doesn't feel like you're taking a lot of effort to breathe because the tank is pressurized. So it's forcing the air into your lungs. Yeah. But the problem is it's forcing the air into your fucking <laughs> right, lungs. Exactly. So yeah. your shit, your whole body is getting, even if you just float at a, at a neutral buoyancy for a certain period of time, like at some point your body is exhausted. Yeah. I've very rarely ever been as tired as I have after a, after a dive trip. And uh, despite me being the biggest guy in the dive group, I somehow required more weights than everyone else to keep me down. Because <laughs> yeah. there's natural you know, oxygen in your body, mm-hmm. and me being twice the size of most of the other people in the dive party, yeah. I was floating up. So the dive master was just like, all right, let's put let's let's put twice as much weight on you. Yeah, let's put cement blocks to your feet yeah. <laughs> and throw them in. If it yeah. makes you feel any better, my mom had the same problem. Oh, yeah, that does make me feel better because she is a stand-up woman. They, they used to call her Bob. Because, <laughs> like, they had to put, like, twice as many weights on her weight belt. She had, like, the old style with the with the lead uh, bricks. And so they had to put twice as many weights to get her to go down. And she was like, she's like, I already look like Shamu with this white and black fucking dive suit. And then they're going to put all this shit on me. And I'm yeah. just sitting there floating like a buoy. <laughs> just I was like, chilling. <laughs> Yeah, so Mike, uh, you you've done some recreational diving, right? A little bit, yeah, not too much. Yeah, how how do you find the experience? I like it. Uh, me personally, uh, all the dive equipment seems cumbersome to me, and I personally have a, like a pseudo fear of the deep ocean. Not like uh, a phobia about it, but like a pseudo fear. So I prefer spear fishing when it comes to underwater activities. Okay, I got huge in that in Hawaii, and it was a it was a great workout, obviously, and b it was just like man versus fish with a spear. It was the most caveman thing ever. It was great. Nice. Yeah. Because everyone here at the table, we all have some experience with uh, skydiving, some experience with scuba diving, Mm -hmm. hand-to-hand combat, marksmanship, espionage, (laughs) evasion and survival. Like it's it's kind of kind of crazy to think about the amount of fucking money that the military has put into us. Yeah. And here we are not using any of those skills. Talk about cream for yourself. Recording a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) He uses his he uses used his espionage skills every time he got a chick out of his house. No. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Got him good. Yeah. Let's move I, on. Hey, let's just be fair. I said used as yeah, in past no, I, tense. It's not even that. It's just like, uh, I didn't take much espionage. It was very straightforward. Get out. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> much like the Jordan Peele classic, just get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, like, a lot of times from uh, the after actions that I get, um, usually it was just him sending a text that said get out. And they're like, you're laying right next to me. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did you not read my text? <laughs> <laughs> Human interaction was uh, stage one. Yeah, We're now yeah, in stage yeah. three, which is you get the fuck out of my apartment. That's right. <laughs> okay. You, yeah. So uh, any other things that you particularly miss doing that you uh, may have taken for granted before? Uh, I click. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> honestly, man, just going to work and making a difference and the world's greatest Navy every day. Just honestly having a routine. Because, um, as you all know, being in the military, we one thing we hate is our routine, but the only thing we live for is the routine. So it's nice um, to go into work, do whatever you have to do, and then come home. Like, your reward is coming home. But now I'm isolated, and all I do is sit at home, so I'm not a huge fan of that. But I, I miss just going to work, doing something, coming home. A little bit of a routine? Mm-hmm. Okay, AJ? Real quick, would you hate being at home so much if it w- if you had other things to go out and do? I mean, no, of course not. Yeah, I'd have an option. Everything's closed, so it's that's, not like I can go do stuff. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
No, I, I knew that's what you were getting at. I just want to make a point. No, oh, yeah. I mean, like, as he is one to do. As he is one to attempt Not very to quickly. Do. No. But he will make a point eventually. It will only take a second. <laughs> <laughs> it usually only does take a second for some of us in the room. My God. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I crapped on Dan a lot the last one, so I had to kind of. Yeah, as he is one to do. As, as is- I am <laughs> definitely one to do. So what do you miss um, about um, life before all this? <laughs> life before the coronavirus? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> uh, driving dang crazy. He's going to freak out. <laughs> he's going to flip the desk over. He's going to shoot. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just waiting for him to answer the question so I can shoot say up my answer. I personally think Dan can put his uh, weapon in condition one and shoot you before you can get to him. But it's fine. That's just me, though. Go ahead. I've been drinking and I can still get to that gun before he can. You think so? I think so. You think you're quicker on the draw than Dan? We will settle this one day with some munitions. <laughs> we will. And <laughs> I'll still love you when you when you lose. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I would say I miss my old job. Mm. And at the time, sometimes it drove me nuts. Any job's going to drive you a little crazy, sure. right? Nothing, t- nothing tests your inner gangster like your employer. But <laughs> I- That's a really good quote. That's a really good quote. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But- I had to I, come back into the microphone just to laugh with that so it wouldn't be hanging. <laughs> I mean, it was a joke, and it was also very serious. But And don't get me wrong, I there are some great things about what I do now, but I miss my old job and the autonomy that I had. So I would go, when I was overseas before, I was kind of given a lot, a lot of wide berth uh, based on my experience and my skill set. They'd say, this is what we need done. Do it however you feel is necessary. And if I need to grab somebody from the team and go do it, we do it. If not, I do it on my own. Right. But kind of that you're a big boy and you know what you're doing, so we'll leave you alone. Yeah. Like, I miss that level of autonomy and being able to just kick doors in or go to the coffee shop or whatever it was I was doing at any given time. Yeah. Okay, but that didn't necessarily change because of the, the pandemic. That's just you um, thinking back to better days it is i was thinking back to better days yes yeah we don't have time for you reminiscing (laughs) (laughs) so specifically what do you wish that like once we finish recording and you know we all dock our penises into each other's foreskin and we're not doing that right now well we're not doing it right now what is my penis docked into that that's my elbow (laughs) it's so big (laughs) (laughs) um okay well if we're we're talking specifically coronavirus stuff i would say um the smoky bar answer from mike earlier like if i can't just go up to say capitol ill house and plop down and have a beer and order some mac and cheese right know? or go see a movie like i'm pretty yeah. sure there'd be some bomb ass movies and i have all this extra time now and i can't do anything with it which is obnoxious exactly yeah i think um what kind of bothers me the most is a lot of times fans will be like hey i'm doing this event like would you mind you know swooping by or like hey do you want to go grab a beer and i used to do that quite often like yeah. I, I used to go meet up with at much parallel risk to my own personal safety go yeah. meet up with random internet strangers <laughs> uh, but i used to do that a lot and i can't do that anymore yeah and uh also to your point um i really fucking wish that i could just go out to like an ihop or a denny's or something yeah. you know and just enjoy fucking breakfast at 4 p.m <laughs> breakfast and freaks at 4 p.m yeah. that's right yeah shout out to the the denny's in 29 palms one of the few denny's in the world that has to have armed security <laughs> but speaking of denny's um we received a report from a very reliable source mm. that uh, aj actually met the guy who invented the DeLorean car made famous from Back to the Future at a Denny's at 3 a.m. in New Orleans. What the I lo- fuck, AJ? I love how you managed to just weave that in there. He's good at it. He's getting better <laughs> at it, which so, is scary. Many, many years ago in a land far, far away. Yes. This was this was probably about two decades ago by now. He's only in his Shut mid-30s. He's not that old. <laughs> As a 55-year-old man, please recant the story as best you can. I could tell the story from 20 years ago because as I'm currently 36, that would have made me 16. So it was a little less than 20 years ago. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I was alive at the time. 55 years old. Go ahead. So John Z. DeLorean, who was the owner and inventor of the DeLorean Motor Company, which created the epitomous car, yeah. which was all stainless steel. Which means you could work on it yourself. Like if you got a ding or a scrape, you could buff it out in your in your garage with a fucking buffer. And all the parts were very generic, so you didn't have to go buy specific DMC parts. He was like, 
if I make a car that's fucking stupid easy to fix and stupid easy to repair, everybody will buy it. Mm. And then he put gold wing doors on it because he was like, you know what I want to do? I want to look like a fucking pimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I go, at the time I was working in a movie theater, and so we would go, we'd close up, the last movie would start at like midnight or something. we close up and the shop about 15 minutes after the last movie starts, the concession stand closes. It would take about maybe an hour, an hour and a half to close the place down. And then the whole crew would go over to Denny's because it was like a block and a half away. And you could get like get a couple sampler platters and everybody would eat a couple of mozzarella sticks and we bullshit. Right. Hell yeah. So we show up there at like 2 a.m. And there's a there's a DMC, De- a DMC DeLorean sitting in the middle of the parking lot. And I was like, look at this fucking legit piece of equipment. Right. So. <laughs> Were you pointing at your waitress yeah, exactly, or the yeah. vehicle? We <laughs> hadn't gone inside yet, so clearly I was talking about the vehicle. It could have been the waitress out smoking, you know. <laughs> she There was no waitress at Denny's at 2 a.m. that was a legit piece of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you mean, a, like, I was going to say dump truck, but apparently that's common parlance for, you know, having a nice ass. And yeah, yeah. She got well, that dump truck. Yeah, yeah Velma had that dump truck. None of those waiters, well, those waitresses just the had. The waiters <laughs> had the dump truck. <laughs> anyway, so... Man, you gay. Go we're ahead. sitting there looking at this vehicle, and I was like, oh, damn, it's DeLorean. What? Yeah. And then John Z. DeLorean himself comes walking out. He's like, yeah, that's mine. And we're like, what? And mm-hmm. he's like, you want to get in? And I was like, fuck yeah. So I got like, if this had been the digital age when they had fucking cell phones that took pictures, I would have like so many selfies. I'd have been like, this is my car now. So to re- just to bring it back around. So you met a stranger as a teenager at a Denny's, and he asked you to get in his car, and you did. Yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's not where I was going to go with my follow-up. Right, what there, was, you got? <laughs> there was no free candy in there. I was disappointed in that, but he was trying to keep AJ, it AJ, there never is. <laughs> I can. All One I can of these days there will be, Michael. <laughs> all I can picture is a young, taut AJ yeah, yeah. Uh, spread out on the hood of the DeLorean <laughs> with the, the suicide doors up. Yeah. Um, or th- Those weren't suicide. Those were no. gullwing doors. Gullwing doors. That's Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the gullwing doors up and just him naked with like a Denny's Grand Slam over his package. I would 100% do that. And yeah, then yeah. me taking pictures. Pictures. <laughs> You're doing great, honey. Yeah, you can he, still get a DeLorean for a reasonable price. We should do this. We should totally do this. If you want to see AJ sans anything but a Grand Slam over his penis, join our OnlyFans, which AJ just created. Would you mind plugging the handle for that? I really did. Stand by. Okay, so... You really made us an OnlyFans. A hundred percent. So, right. the, the OnlyFans, are, uh, our username is... Pops at Pop Smoke Official with the <laughs> underscores, just like the just like the the Insta page. Okay. The uh, the, <laughs> the, Insta the, page. the username is the Smoke Pit. Okay. So there's nothing on there right now. Yeah. Because I literally just just created this. Just created so it. So you're hearing it here first. So don't DM Dan and be like, man, there's nothing on your page. It's so boring. I don't see AJ's butthole at all. Plus Would- I. Plus, I have to unfollow this one person that I was following before because. <laughs> oh wow! She's it a was big old woman. <laughs> oh no no she, real dumb truck of a woman. <laughs> she's she not big, but she's very political. So I gotta I gotta take her. Okay step okay okay cool 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 cool. As a matter of fact, here's here's her in a Bernie outfit. Oh wow! Why you? Wow yeah wow! Because I didn't know she was into Bernie. I just thought she had a dump truck, and I was like, it's like all it takes to gain his loyalty. That's true. Oh wow! Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool, so word, word, so word, word, I'm gonna word. unfollow unfollow her real quick, and then we'll be good to go. Right on. <laughs> speechless. I am speechless. That was this one, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. Okay, so <laughs> I uh, I do have to um, issue out another apology. We are gonna take one more fan question. Why? Why? Why the lies, Dan? <laughs> I, I don't know. At what day will you stop lying to the beautiful audience? Of the I Smoke think that is very in vain with this, mm. because if we're considering running for office, as this fan suggests, there are going to be a lot more lies. That's coming. Him, that's him plugging the fact that we're going to be talking about that here in a second. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm the host. <laughs> yeah, he he guides this ship while we try to jump off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it on the rails. That's right. Okay, so uh, a fan suggested that we should run for office. Uh, AJ would be the president of the United States. That's fair. Mike would be the vice president. Oh. And I could be the secretary of defense. Okay, okay. And I, I think that is a that is very insightful of this individual, knowing our personalities. Yeah. Because uh, as I see it, here, um, <laughs> here, here come AJ, the slams. AJ would be the one that's making all the grandiose speeches. You know, saying all the right things, you know, you know, convincing all the thick women to come out and advocate for us. Right. It's 2020. I don't have to say shit the right way. The thick women just show up. The, no. <laughs> I mean, I would hope. No. 
<laughs> what the fuck are you cackling about? He's so proud of that joke. Oh, I'm so proud of it. They just show up. Jesus. All right, go ahead. First of all, I don't know why. Thick women are serious. All right. <laughs> oh, we oh, they know. Are. <laughs> oh, we know. Oh, we know how serious they are. That's right. Thick women is the best, and I'm not going to hide away from that, nor have I ever. No, but please. Is this your your campaign speech? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he takes the podium. Yeah. <laughs> I will never shy away from thick women. <laughs> <laughs> and what? they're all in the audience with their phones. You're doing great, yeah, sweetie. That's right. Yeah. My my actual point was that, given today's political climate, yeah, I don't have to watch what I say. Like there was one person who said, and I'm not making a a personal judgment about the current president one way or another. Sure. Right, wrong, or indifferent. But someone said, if there's any positive to take away from the current president, it's that. There really isn't any more skeleton in the closet that's going to stop you from being president. That's a really good point. Because really, yeah. any old dump truck can do it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as uh, as AJ brought up earlier, uh, the Tiger King show has become very popular. Very, very popular. And certain uh, brands that we associate with mm -hmm. uh, have made t-shirts saying, that guy for president. But then AJ pointed out that Joe he Exotic. actually- Yeah, Joe Exotic. Uh, that he had actually ran for president before. He did. Joe Exotic from the Tiger King uh, absolutely had run for president in the past. His, um, what is it? His political ads are yeah. available on YouTube, I believe. Yes, they are. Yeah. And while I get yelled at a lot for saying common use company names that aren't sponsoring us. Now, when you say it's six times one sentence is where we get uppity. I did yes. not say Amazon six times one sentence. Oh my God. <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> piss Dan off. But seriously, like go look at Joe Exotic's presidential mm -hmm. run. It was a beautiful disaster. Agreed. Yeah, Mike has been telling us that we need to do that, and I think we should do that tonight. He's do in it. The, he is currently yeah. in the popular zeitgeist. There's no reason not to for sure. Look. For sure. Yeah. So the um, the the basis behind this was that uh, AJ would be making all the grandiose speeches and you know uh, uniting the people behind a common cause. Uh, and I quote: uh, "Thick women. <laughs> <laughs> if you like thick women, vote Sensi uh, or Feffer uh, Sensi. Feffer Sensi. Yeah. 2024. I like to point out that the best part about this joke is the beer I'm currently drinking. Double D I P A." <laughs> Double My DIP. God. There's a bomber girl in the front, and she is exactly with two C's thick. <laughs> <laughs> just the right kind of thick. I'm yeah. just saying, I, I'm a great politician because I mean what I say. Yeah. And so, and I quote, uh, Sensi, chilling, veeping it up, <laughs> like using the term vice president, the veep. Oh, I Just get like, it. you know, shrugging your shoulders, just veeping it up, you know? Yeah, just, I'm never going to call you veep. Just <laughs> five, you won't ever speak to me. <laughs> we will I'll, never be in the same state at the same time. I'll speak to you whenever <laughs> I want because all I have to do is quarantine Indiana because I want to. How dare you? <laughs> How Let dare the you? Hoosiers free. <laughs> and then uh, uh, he'd be veeping it up, winking at the queen of England, getting us better deals on tea. Oh, you'd have all the tea you could drink. <laughs> yeah, so like, uh, you as president, what countries are you deploying your vice president, Mike Sensi, to to negotiate trade deals with? Go. Well, you'd have to give me a list of all the ones that have female prime ministers and queens. No, you don't. No. I can woo a man. It's not yeah. hard. Yeah, no, no, not at no, all. I, I don't want to throw your Navy experience at them right away. Uh, that would be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, India. He's, he's out there. India has a female prime minister. Okay. I'm with it. What's Vespasi. up, India? I do like it to spice. <laughs> <laughs> what is it India, or as they used to call it, Britain's spice rack? That's right. <laughs> and so, to me, as the Secretary of Defense, which I would um, blackmail AJ with all the skeletons that I do have in his closet. You have to blackmail and mean as shit. <laughs> but I'd want to. We're politicians now. We're yeah. changing all the secretary positions. Don't, don't because, bang on that. <laughs> <laughs> because, because secretary is a dumb name. Yes, I will be. The uh, Minister of War. Minister of War. I like it. Instead of the Secretary of Defense. Another good metal band name. And my first action would be to use DeFore as the real assessment and selection Q course. Wow, okay. So if you want to be Special Forces, you got to go out there and kill like uh, at least 27 minions of a warlord. Okay. Yeah, I like so it. It, nothing else. Yeah, like, that's it. <laughs> you could just be like some good old boy from Indiana who's really good at just laying in one place and shooting things far away. I don't know if you've ever met operators, but a lot of them are good old boys. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm looking right at you. <laughs> yeah, so I think that would um, that would be good. So um, for the next segment, what I'd like to do is to kick it to each of you. Okay. And uh, so we'll start with AJ, so that way Mike can Google what a vice president does. <laughs> I don't know what the, I, I don't know what they do. Exactly. So you have Neither to, do they. So you're you know a good what? company. Just like a true VP, I'm not going to Google shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So AJ, um, without getting too uh, political, uh, what what are a few things that uh, that you would like to do as president that Mike would say his platform, and then I could talk about some things that some changes that I would like to make as Minister of War. 
and we'll we'll see if the people like our platform. Okay. Bitch, you just made me president. You said don't get political. Well, I mean, like, don't be like, oh, well, in contrast to this person, I would do this. I have never done that on the show. You always uh, do that. No, I'm very specific. No, that's how he picks up girls at a bar. But like, mm. you see that short fuck over there, and he points to me, and I'm just there with, like, my Stella. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> I'm 5'11". <laughs> way, way to call yourself out for drinking Stella like a punk. Stella's first an that's amazing. Stella's bar. great. How, exactly. how dare you? How dare you insult your minister of war? <laughs> how dare you, Detective Diaz? Bone! <laughs> um... I do not get political on the show because I know who I work for. I know whomst I work for. Whomst. And even earlier when I mentioned the current president, I didn't say his name and I didn't say anything bad about him. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah way, to, way to skirt that. <laughs> True politician. Yeah. Already getting ready. Exactly. See, that's what I would do first. So so what's your speech? What do you got? So that's not actually me clapping. That's Mike clapping cheeks. Whose cheeks is he clapping? Wait, wait. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bliat. Oh boy. <laughs> What's that sound? I believe it's your Uber. <laughs> <laughs> so um what kind of what kind of changes would you as a private citizen want to make to this country? Okay, so the first thing, He clicked too. He does. He I, clicks. I did it to be funny earlier, now it's stuck in my head, so <laughs> you're just gonna have to suffer until you go crazy. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to overhaul the legal system. We're going to take all the bullshit, nonsensical laws out, and we're going to fucking replace them with easy-to-understand stuff. You don't have to go to fucking Stanford for 18 years to be able to parse it into one fucking understanding or another. For those of you who don't know what parse means. <laughs> okay, so when you read a law, and you're trying <laughs> to understand whether or not you're complying with the law... And the law is so goddamn complicated, you want to fucking punch Dan in the sh in the face, <laughs> Why Jesus. Punches which, Dan? which is not fair because Dan does a lot of things to get punched in the face, and that's not one of them. As I am one to do, as he is several to do. Yeah, yeah. right. But a whole if, if you're do. reading a law and you're trying to figure out if you're in compliance, like let's say you're reading your local gun laws, right? You're trying to make sure you're not doing something illegal, right? Why the fuck is it so goddamn complicated? There's two reasons. One is because if you don't make it com complex and all-encompassing, somebody will take advantage of a loophole and be a fucker about it, right? Ruining it for the rest of us. The second thing is that if it's, com if it's complicated enough, someone probably wrote a fucking bill at your state or federal level that they got to slap their name on and say they had something to do with gun control and they done made it more complicated for everybody else. For sure. So our whole legal system gets scrapped, not its core understanding, like not the adversarial system of plaintiff, defendant, judge, so on and so forth, but like the, the legal, the laws themselves, scrap them in the fucking toilet, write new ones. Mm. Simplified, easy to understand, not archaic. Yeah, and you made a good point the other day. Like, it's really bullshit when whomstever the politician is tries to attach some bullshit, non-related writer to a law. And it's like, ah, yes, if you want funding for the veteran suicide, you also have to include this in the bill. Yeah, there was a not there was a crazy guy a while back that made a big deal about he wanted to put a law in Exotic Joe, <laughs> probably. <laughs> there, there, he was an actual politician though, and he said. He was the mayor of our hearts. <laughs> he said, I don't have, to, nobody has time to read all this crap, right? Because mm. if you have a bill and the bill is, let's say, 10,000 fucking pages, which, you know, not outside the realm of possibility, who the fuck had time to read all of that and make sure it didn't fuck somebody, right? You think Dianne Feinstein or Mitch McConnell sitting at home every night reading bills? Probably. Probably fucking not. Oh. Because they probably watch Matlock at 830 and then go to bed. I mean, yeah. Right, because they're old as hell. That's it's what a I was cozy going night. But okay, I mean, on. Mitch McConnell polishes his shell. Uh, <laughs> you know, fucking. Uh, Remember when I said don't get too political? Yeah. <laughs> Feinstein, no, that's why I did both. Feinstein <laughs> goes on Google and tries to figure out what a weapon is because she still hasn't figured that out after years despite it's having a license tough. for one. Yeah. 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 So, but my point is, like, you got all this. There was one guy who said we should cut it down to, like, three pages. And maybe that's a little ridiculous, but it should be reasonable, understandable, and quick. Mm. Yeah, the bill that we're working on for the toxic exposure um, uh, was, was I'm not going to say the exact uh, information because apparently I'll get in trouble for that. Right. But uh, yeah, it was it was a very reasonably length bill, I will say that. Right, like if, if, your, if your congressman or senator needed to read it, they could take an hour in the afternoon, go through it, and be like, okay, I have a general understanding of what this means. Yeah. As somebody who has spent the briefest amount of time uh, walking the halls on the Capitol, uh, Hill, 
the politicians don't read a lot. They get their staff to read it, and then the staff gives them the uh, highlights. Cliff notes. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a great idea. That's what we should be doing. We should be having 20-something staffers reading bills and then letting their older older bosses know what they actually say because Lord knows there won't be any political bend to that particular prop. Uh, po- uh, yeah, the way situation. that I kind of see it is it's like a commanding officer and he's got a bunch of like staff and COs or petty officers or chiefs that, um, you know, just kind of like they they do the shit, they do the meetings, they do the trading, they do the deliberating and, you know, like I'll give you this and we'll got, my guy will vote for that if you vote for this. And, you know, they're in there doing the politics stuff and then they bring it back to the officer and the officer is like, ah, 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 I shall get another damn for this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's actually a perfect, a perfectly good different system because- at least the officers started at the bottom, and now they're here. <laughs> hey. Right? That the, a lot of times, was, oh, there's a lot of politicians that didn't start at the bottom of shit. Very true. Very right? true. Yeah, because like when you look at a politician and you're like, that man or woman is incompetent. How are they making laws? It's no, they have somebody who's much more intelligent. Yeah. Went to an Ivy League, running the staff, and just like, hey, if you want to get reelected, you should vote on this or you should not vote on this because, as AJ has told me uh, so many times about the campaign financing. Oh yeah, when you become a congressman or a senator, your first day in office, you got to start raising a ridiculous amount of money per week just to get reelected. Like we're talking tens of thousands of dollars right off the bat. Yeah. And so how much time does your elected official spend campaigning? Yeah. Just a ridiculous amount. Yeah, that's why they have a staff to kind of like actually run the country while they're out campaigning. Which is, <laughs> which is fucking disgusting. Yeah. Second thing I'm doing is I'm going to simplify the government in that sense too. You don't need 15 staffers. That's you don't need fair. 20 staffers. I'll give you maybe two guys or a guy and a gal. Not trying to 2020, not trying to whatever. <laughs> but like I'll give, you, I'll give you two staff and the elected representative. You don't get to spend all three quarters of your time campaigning. We talked about this earlier. If I was going to be, let's say a miracle happened and I was a senator for the state of Virginia, right? right? I'm only going to do one term. I'm going to pretend like I'm only in there for one term. I'm not spending any time campaigning. I'm not spending any time raising money. I'm just going to do what the fuck I think is a good idea in the best interest of my constituents. And if they decide to reelect me after the fact, fine. If they don't, I get that fat retirement. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. So um, as a president, you would endeavor to try to overhaul our legal system to be less complex and to limit terms. Who said anything about limited terms? Well, you were just talking about like not can't not running your office as if you were trying to get reelected. Well, I mean, that's more I'm I'm. I'm about term limits. Yeah. Because you should not spend 45 years in the Senate. Okay. There was a guy who voted against civil rights who didn't retire until like 2010. <laughs> all right. That's what the fuck? <laughs> so, first of all, how the hell did you get reelected? As if we don't know the answer to that question. And secondly, 2000, dude, that's not what the government was designed to do. Okay. So, any final thoughts before we move on to Mike as <laughs> vice president? Yes. I'm going to say something controversial. I've said a hundred times. He likes thick women. I'm going to cut the defense department budget i'm going to cut several other budgets Uh. and i'm going to use that money to beef up our education system to the point where we have the smartest people in the world and then those people when they join the military will find that because i cut the government i cut the dod but i only cut the dod in projects and fucking programs that we don't goddamn need that don't help anybody i already want to vote for you yeah um, you got my vote (laughs) because think about as a marine or or as a sailor sure if you have better gear because nobody bought a bunch of crap from some vendor that nobody wanted, we all win. You're happier at the end of the day. That's a good point, actually. All right, well, my mine's going to be a lot quicker and a lot more fun. Um, first thing, as VP. Everyone gets sombreros. Everyone gets a sombrero. That's just that's day one. And if you're not wearing it during the inauguration, you Correct can't. yourself. <laughs> and you must leave. So sombreros for sure. First thing I'm doing uh, with as much power as a VP has, because I don't know how much power they actually have, uh, recreational use marijuana across the board. Like, it's legal. Like, I don't know why some states have legalized it and some have not, but that's not the country I grew up in. I want everybody high and happy. Number two, drinking age lowered to 18. You're an adult. You can join the military. You can have a beer. I mean, natural selection is going to... Everyone's like, oh, they're too young to blah, blah, blah. It's like, you make your decisions for yourself when you're 18. Drinking is part of that. Drugs drinking and i can't think of a third d <laughs> drugs drinking and you can't think of a single other d <laughs> <laughs> come on mike drugs drinking and dick for all no and ditties funding mm. planned parenthood 
For sure. Um, yeah, I would do that. I'm going to back up whatever President uh, AJ has to do. And then I would take it as a case-by-case basis. I think a lot of things in this country are great as is. A lot of things are terrible as is. Um, and I don't really know until I come face-to-face with them. So while I'm out, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, but still respecting the six-foot uh, space issue, I'm going to uh, see problems as they come, and I will address them on the spot. And it won't be empty promises. It'll be fulfilled within that week, as much power as I have. Yeah, they'll present you with something very complex. You'll be like, hey, you. Yeah. And then just walk backwards. Yeah. And exactly. Secret Service takes that person away. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't want it too complex. I want it fun. I want us to get back to the America that parties, enjoys each other's company, and just takes naps all day. How do you breezy. feel about the drinking age? As is right now? Yes. Should be 18. Should be 18. Makes no sense. I mean, in Europe, what is it, 16, 15 in some countries? Something like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you can have a glass of wine with your family at dinner and you're a teenager, I see no harm in that. I mean, if it's not, I don't want anything like too young because your liver can't fucking function yet. But, um, yeah, drinking age should be 18. If you're a legal adult, you can vote, you can buy a gun, do all these things, you should be able to buy alcohol. Put yourself into crushing debt. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so as Minister of War... What do you got? The first thing I'm doing is I am demoting anybody who posts side-by-side pictures of them <laughs> in leggings doing a horse pose and their uniform picture. Actually, can I, before you begin your speech... TikTok is now illegal, <laughs> and if you're caught in uniform uh, doing TikTok videos for clout, then you're immediately executed. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> and Mike, would you please go delete your side-by-side thirst traps? I will not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, you meant men and women, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of no, course, just particularly yeah. Mike. <laughs> yeah, you, you said the horse pose thing. If he's not yeah. doing it in leggings, can we keep those photos on my computer? Yeah, on your computer is fine. It was a tasteful shoot. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Yeah. I'm just saying, what else am I supposed to jerk off to? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're the president. <laughs> Lord Allied Commander North America. There you go. I like it. So, uh, real talk, though. Um, so, I uh, love the idea of a French Foreign Legion. Oh, I like um, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, France is um, all over Africa and other parts of the world, and you never hear about it because... You know, there a lot of them aren't French citizens. And granted, you get that after you leave, uh, but at the time, like you're kind of like literally a, an issued piece of gear. Yes. When you're in the French Foreign Legion, and so people like to make the comparison of the French Foreign Legion and the Marine Corps, and I'm like, uh, no. Like the French Foreign Legion doesn't have like quirky weekly news with Corporal Two ribbons. You yeah. Know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if we could take the French part out of it, I'm all about this idea. Well, I mean, not a lot of people in it are French. Yes, but it's still the French Foreign Legion. So the the best thing that I think the French Foreign Legion does, above all else, is the tactical shorts. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Those hats percent. are pretty legit in the desert, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, you, if you've ever spent time in the desert, those hats are legit. Yes. So I, um, I would also um, garner a, um, a focus group of like maybe like 1,000 people uh, ranging from all ranks, uh, primarily lower enlisted, and then some junior officers, and then a couple of higher rankers that, you know, uh, don't have reputations of being kiss asses. And I put them all in a theater, and I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, what I want you to guys to do now is shoot me an email with everything that you think is wrong about the military. And then just, you know, go party at the strip club with the vice president, because that's where he'd be. I mean, you can find me there. <laughs> <laughs> at the local dive bar. That's right, yeah, just sitting in the silence. One, look for the one with the Secret Service out front. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and then me and my staff, um, as long with the president, the vice president, the Joint Chiefs of Staffs, we're, we'll read all of these, or rather have uh, <laughs> Hooter yeah. Girls uh, <laughs> recite them to us with interpretive dance I'd, to keep Mike's attention. Veep. Well, Veep. What's up, what's up, yeah. <laughs> And then, so I and I really want to know what people think we're wasting money on because you said uh, slash the DOD budget. However, I fully agree with you that we have a ton of programs and stuff that we buy that we don't need. You know, it's interesting. The military has a program right now. I, at least the Navy does. I'm pretty sure the Marine Corps has it, and and maybe the other services do as well. I've I've just seen Navy guys that have been getting this award and, and a couple Marines. Yep. But basically, they have a whole program where if they could figure out a cheaper way to do something then they get an award for it, and then the the military goes with it. And I think one of them was there was some part that they needed to fix some some kind of equipment in the Navy. And some relatively low-ranked guy, I think he was like an E4, he fucking went to the machine shop, got the 3D printer out, 
3D printed a new like little piece. It was like a little piece of a thing a jigger. It was a little little doodad. Yeah. 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 And this doodad cost the Navy like fucking seventy five dollars a unit. And he found a way to 3D print these motherfuckers and they were actually it was a better quality product and it only cost like seventy five cents a unit. So he saved the the Navy something like four or five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. And Yeah. And that's it. We're we're tapping the ingenuity of the people who are doing the work. Yeah. And that's that's a hundred percent my thing. We're, let's not buy the rocket launcher from the great state of who gives a shit because that senator wanted to keep that plant open because he wanted to get reelected. Yeah. When and, nobody and wanted that rocket, and we have plenty of rockets that work fine. Yeah. And for all intents and purposes, that's not really the Secretary of Defense's call. Like, yeah. uh, if you really look into it, like uh, Senate and Congress have a lot more say about what equipment we use than the actual commanders. So you're like, oh, like they give us a shit. Write your congressman. Write your senator. And there's plenty of times where congressmen and senators have been the ones who have pushed, hey, we need this piece of gear. And the military's like, I don't fucking want that. Like yeah. the, the updated small uh, shoulder mounted um, assault weapon. Sure. Yeah, I think the rocket launcher. Uh, yeah, they, they got rid of the whole uh, 0351 MOS yep. after they replaced the shoulder uh, the shoulder mounted rocket launcher. Yep. And it's just like, okay, we just spent all this fucking money, and then you guys got rid of the MOS. Like, oh, <coughs> okay, whatever. So, um, furthermore, uh, beyond that, tattoos. Yeah. Easy. Like, I, I would say, as long as you don't have any nautical references. <laughs> um, What's your problem? Or any sea animals, <laughs> or any roses, or any anchors. Do you want me as VP or what? Any siblings' names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, I, I think that, like, um, I'm not a huge fan of, of neck and face and hand tattoos, sure. but whatever. Like, who am I to judge, right? Right. Like, you, you uh, I remember I went to the PX on my birthday, because I was off that day. I was in station in Quantico. And I didn't shave, and I went to the PX because Mass Effect 2 had just got released, and I love that series if yeah, you listen sure. to the show. Yeah. And I walked in there, and a reporter for the Quantico Times or Gazette or whatever it's called, he comes up to me, and he's like, hey, I'm Corporal So-and-so. Do you mind if I ask you for a few questions? And it's so, like this other dude's like, snap, photograph. And I was like, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> and they're like, what do you think about the new tattoo policy? And I said, it is ridiculous to evaluate an in- individual's ability to lead other Marines in combat based on what their skin looks like. True. Unless your tattoos are stupid. It's true, yeah. Well, thanks to take that that cool thing that I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that cool thing that I just said. No, you're hundred percent. You're hundred percent right. That's there. AJ's whole thing on the show, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> no, you're hundred percent right. Like the the tattoo policy. I would say that yes, there should be restrictions. Like, don't have tattoos on your neck or above your neck. Right? Don't look like an asshole. Don't have uh, like f- tattoos on your knuckles and shit. Are you saying Post Malone shouldn't be a general? Yes. It's rude. See, uh, as because Minister I of War, I, don't, I wouldn't care. Like, if you want to get a fucking dick tattooed on your face, get a dick tattooed on your face. Let me see your qual target. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, if you get a dick tattooed on your face and you shoot marksman, demoted. <laughs> well, and my thing about that is is that if you want it, if you want it, right? We have an all-volunteer military for a reason. Right. If you want it, if you want to get in the military, if you want to do a good job, you should be able to uphold a standard. Now, I think that some standards are fucking stupid, right? Like, why can't you have beards? Mostly because of gas masks. Yeah. When's the last time we got gassed by an enemy? It's been a minute. It's been a fucking hot minute. And does that mean we shouldn't have beards in the military? No. It should just mean that maybe certain MOSs get restricted from that, or maybe we come up with some kind of system. Like, when I was overseas in my last job, those of us with beards just kept the thing of Vaseline in their gas masks uh, bag, right? Mm-hmm. So you take that, you take the tube, you smear it on your beard, you slap the gas mask on. It takes an extra second. If that one second is the difference in life and death, you're pretty fucked anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> but no, 100%. Like, if you want to get sleeves, get sleeves. Yeah, so uh, those of you who listen to the show a long time know that I am a firm believer that there are a couple MOSs in the Marine Corps that I think should be Navy. Like, because yeah. we get our, our medical and our religious and some other things from the Navy... Like, there are certain things in the Marine Corps that we could probably hand over. Cooks. Yeah. And, um, so, yeah, so, like, there, there's some things that we could do <laughs> there. Guess. I'm not crapping on cooks. They're just every cook I know is always, like, everybody looks at me like I'm outdated software. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the, um, additionally to that, I think that uh, we should be engaging in <clears throat> better cross-country drills because, like you said earlier, our military budget is huge. We spend more than the next, and I'm paraphrasing, 20 people on our defense budget, something of like 17, 18, which of our allies. It's like you know? 25%. We, t- we spent more than 25% of our allies, or 25% of the, the other next... N- sorry, I'm fucking this up. We spend more than the next 25 countries combined. Yes. And like 
23 of those are our allies. Yeah, so I think that uh, there's that. And there, there's a lot of fucked up places in the world. And I would like to have like a foreign legion type unit because we're going to need fucking pipe hitters. We're going to need people who have slayed bodies. We're going to mm. need people who have seen the ugly nature of war to lead our forces. And so I feel like, yeah, we kind of have like our, our regular military, maybe scale that a little bit. But then we go to places like Defor where, you know, it's just genocide and warlords and, you know, displacement and stuff like that. We go to these places and we get other people to pay for it, too. Like, hey, if you want the American Foreign Legion to go kick whoever's fucking terrorist ass this is, you're going to help us foot the bill. And then we're going to take those leaders and we're going to farm them out to units. So that way, eventually, God forbid, we do go to war with an equal size state. We have these proven combat leaders mm. that are in that. And so it's kind of almost like a pipeline where... If you, you know, like uh, like there's a book that I read where it's kind of like if you want to be part of this military, the best thing to do is to go into Legion Air Corps and then, you know, you get your fucking dick wet there with enemy blood mm. and then you get kicked out to whatever part of the military and you got that sweet little tab or yeah. that little device and everybody knows you're a badass and it fast tracks your career. Because mm. I think that we should be in combat. We should be honing these skills. And yeah, it sucks that we're going to have guys die. But like you said all volunteer force and any Marine I've ever fucking talked to all they want to do is go slay bodies right like you don't join the Marine Corps infantry to pay for college <laughs> you know if like you I do. get that yeah no disrespect to anybody who joins the military <laughs> for college or sure. benefits or whatever I get it if you're socially disenfranchised it's a great opportunity to lift yourself out of poverty I did it I know AJ did like how I'm in I'm in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I do think that we should have that, you know, because it's it's keeping us fresh because like somebody made the joke. It's like North Korea says they're going to kick our ass. It's like we have more combat veterans than you have people who are just in the military, period. Right. Like your generals haven't fought a war like they were like fucking haven't even been born yet when the Korean conflict happened. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So like I, I do think we should have that to an extent. And I do think that we should reduce redundancy. We should find out where money's being wasted. We should tighten standards on some things and relax standards on another thing. And at the end of the day, everybody has to acknowledge that the entire purpose of the military is to serve policy. MCDP-1 war fighting, it's like one of the first things it says. War must serve policy. So whatever the president, the vice president, Congress, and, um, uh, this, uh, well, because Congress is the House of Representatives and the Senate. So Congress isn't just that one. It, it's the two houses of Congress, the House and um, and the Senate, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. Yeah, but so, because <laughs> uh, sometimes people just say Congress and Senate. No, it's, it's not that. But war must serve the policy, and I need to direct the military in such a way that the spending of American lives furthers our national interest in a way that is morally sound and financially beneficial. I concur with that. It's We shouldn't just be throwing bodies at whatever current pet project the government has. Because that's what the army does. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if we cut spending on shit we don't need and boost up spending on things we do need, like the, the DOD budget is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Especially considering the, the almost poverty level that a lot of people in the military are at. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're an E3 and you're barely making ends meet, and you live in the fucking barracks and you're not paying for anything anyway, like, you're making trash money. Yeah. And so, where the fuck is all that money going? Some senator's pocket. Yeah, because it, it is kind of funny to look at the differences between the different services. Like, I know E2s who uh, in the Navy who get housing allowance. Yeah. And then I know E6s in the Marine Corps who have to live in the barracks because their their unit won't approve it. Yeah, their unit's like, ha ha, fuck you, Marines are all about suffering. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't mean we're required to suffer. Like, you and can, No, 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 I get that. You join the Marine Corps, you suffer. Like, if you didn't <laughs> want to suffer, you could join something else. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I love being a Marine, right? There's a lot of things about being a Marine that, that made me the, the better person that I like to believe that I am today, sans evidence. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, <go> but, like, you don't have to make everything so Goddamn miserable yeah. all the fucking time. The Marine Corps is still making Marines get haircuts. Yeah. Despite all the bullshit that's happening. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing in the, in the order that says you have to get a haircut every week. Right. The order says you have to get a haircut so you maintain standard. Mm -hmm. But some fucking lieutenant wanted to fucking look better than all the other lieutenants one day back in the day and said, ah, my Marines are getting a haircut every Sunday. <laughs> and then all the other lieutenants were like, oh, man, that sounds like a great idea. And that's his officer voice. And so now we're stuck with it. Right, because one yeah. person thought it was a good idea. The good idea fairy floated around and ear fucked every other fucking officer. Yeah, and so now that's it's not policy, but it's policy. And I, I think the last thing that I would do as minister of war is 
also give you guys the opportunity to occasionally get behind the gun. Yeah, you know? no, I I feel like I, I love like the old school like the generals are on the front lines with their men kind yeah. of stuff. I'm fully with that. Yeah, like the the King of Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just packed into that flight suit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, buddy, if I'm president, I'm gonna be Terry Crews from Idiocracy with the fucking saw. Yeah. <laughs> right in Congress, like they'd be like, ah, but Mr. President, I'd be like. I'm sorry, that's Lord Command- Commander of Allied Forces North America. <laughs> and then I'd fire a half a belt into the air and be like, what you got, Nancy? <laughs> yeah, and so I, I think that um, the best way to get us into this position is for us to expose our skeletons and whatever scandals we have now. <laughs> nope. So, <laughs> <laughs> Not this episode. But Mr. President. <laughs> but Mr. Mr. Why? Because I'm the because I'm the president. God damn it! That's all right, why. All right. I think that uh, with there's a reason they may be president in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that way you could be the one that everyone's yelling at. Exactly. And Mike and I could just be chilling in the back. I'm the one that has the power to fire both of you. <laughs> no. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> and if I'm president, I'll find a way to have the power to. I don't fire think you know how you. things work. No, I don't think you know how things <laughs> I work. I think you guys don't know how things work. I'm I'm President Terry Crews with a saw. I will make it happen. Yeah, and now Mike and I are doing a coup. Exactly. And then great. Mike immediately resigns back to the vice president so he doesn't have to do anything. Exactly. <laughs> it's a cush job. <laughs> no, I, I would, think that uh, a lot of our of our personal skeletons and I and I won't put this at anyone, so this could be me included, is that there are a lot of situations that um people have continued to revisit even though it should have been something that they got out of sooner. Like you know this is a bad situation, you know something's toxic. And you continue to revisit it. And I heard an expression that I that I absolutely loved is like you only play Birmingham once on a world tour. Yeah, okay. You know, if if whatever the situation or the person is is would be considered Birmingham, like you play it once, you got the experience, you made the money, you know, then fucking leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> like, fair. You that's don't fair. need to stick around in, in fucking Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Even the band Alabama didn't stick around in Alabama. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, you don't need to stick around there. Like, once you evaluate that a situation is like, man, this kind of sucks. What do they teach us to do in the military? Improve your position. Mm -hmm. So, like, once you identify this shitty circumstance, don't fucking stay. (laughs) Change your fucking life. Change your circumstances, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's fair. But we... we all three are victim to that, so yeah. I mean, I think anybody in the world is victim to that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, we can look at it this way. Dan, I'm not sure about your upbringing so much, but yeah. I, I'm sure there was a lot of corn involved. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but More than you'll ever fucking know. But, but Mike's like, there's some more to me than corn. <laughs> <laughs> As he pulls out a piece of corn. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Dan and I have been uh, practically homeless before, and we improved our situation because we decided... This this situation is toxic for my well being, and I'm not having it. And right. we fucked off. That's fair. But when it comes to matters of the heart, that can be a bit more difficult. For sure, absolutely. Whether it's a family member or a loved one, and um, and <laughs> those of you who listen to the show, and I think that's I probably should never say that again because I've said <laughs> it like six times this episode. Uh, know that we like the book Ender's Game, and right. there was a quote in there that paraphrase basically says like once you know someone enough to destroy them, you sympathize to them. And so whether it be a loved one or a family member, once you kind of figure out what the fuck their damage is, it's a lot harder to get out of that situation because of it. Yeah. Unless they deny 9-11, then you never talk to your stepmother again. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, um, evaluate your life, find out what things in your life are holding you back, and then just have an honest discussion with yourself if it's time to leave. Fucking A. Anybody got anything else before we head out? President? That'd be uh, Lord Supreme Allied Commander. Of Impeached. Impe- Impe- yeah, you're, you're done. Already, you're done. already tired you, of you it. You can't impeach anybody. You certainly can't impeach me. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. I'm like the queen. I'll be president until <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll be so good, everybody will just reelect me. Yeah, that's what they, it is. They'd be like, instead of free stimulus checks, everybody gets a uh, free dime bag. I, I'm pretty sure that was my pitch anyway, but okay. I'm just saying I agree with my VP. You're supposed to do that. That's true. That's a good point. That's a free point. dime bag? That's like 10 bucks. Like, I'll take the $1,200 check, and then I'll buy 12,000 dime bags. Yes, that's but every... how math works. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, everybody gets a free dime bag, not just people who fit a certain qualifying standard. Okay. So even the rich get free dime bags under your presidency. Great. Well, under my Great. presidency, you'd get capped out on a certain amount of money that you're allowed to have at any given time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 It'd wow. be a ridiculous amount by any person, uh, any normal person's standard. What's the cap? Off the top of your head, what do you got? <sighs> Let's say $50 million. That's not, I mean. That's insanity. Yeah. Like, that's my point. 
No, I mean, think about the amount of people who would be fucking legit freaked the fuck out if I said you could only have fifty million dollars. So you're saying, you're saying, yeah, then everybody Tom, would leave and go to Russia. That's what I'm saying. And you're leaving me holding the bag. Now I got to fight Russia with all these new billionaires. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're, you're the minister of war. When they try to leave, you fucking shoot the plane down. My God, what, what is this? This campaign has fallen apart. This quickly, so quickly. turned into 1984. Jesus. I'm pretty sure that all of the people that are going to elect us are the kind of people who aren't going to be on the plane, so they're going to be okay with us shooting it down. Are you just okay with Tom Hanks leaving the country? Because that's Tom, what you're doing. No, Tom Hanks would not leave. Tom Hanks is exempt. I wouldn't let him. <laughs> Tom Hanks is exempt. He is a national treasure. He is, and he also has more than $50 million. So. Oh, yeah, much more than that. Because, um, so, I, I, AJ and I get into this uh, every fucking country we visit. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks? Uh, yeah, yes. more or less. <laughs> <laughs> he is the subject of uh, the biggest arguments we've ever had. And right. sometimes he's there. Yeah, I, I I believe that um that like I'm I'm okay with the idea of people amassing large wealth because if they don't have it here, they're going to go elsewhere. However, I do feel like once you get to a certain point, your civic responsibility should increase. Like like uh, you know, we always say like there's all these tax breaks for the uber wealthy. Right. And it's like if you make a fucking ten billion dollars a year, but you're paying no taxes. Like, come on, really? And then my twelve hundred bucks is that big of a deal? Right. You know. There you go. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll compromise yeah. instead of taking everybody's money that's over a certain amount. Flat tax. Everybody's on a flat tax. Okay. Easy. Yeah. So I feel like if you have that much money, like your civic responsibility goes through the roof. Because uh, you have a responsibility to the people who helped you amass this wealth to continue this nation to be great. And then I would completely overhaul, like if I was president, uh, after <laughs> AJ eventually <laughs> gets impeached in disgrace. My God, never. this is the most dramatic White House series ever. You're never prying me out of that seat, Daniel. <laughs> He's going to be in the retirement home. Yes. I'll, his room's going to look like the Oval Office. <laughs> I'll be at the actual Resolute desk <laughs> until the moment you pry my cold, dead fucking hands off of it. I will go down as the best president in U.S. history. You're sounding a lot like somebody you didn't want to name. <laughs> and I'll be the last president in U.S. history because I will be... Lord Supreme Allied Commander of America. Well, this non yes. the, all America because I will annex South America. And this Central non-existent America. power went straight to his <laughs> head. Straight to his head. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm going to improve conditions on the whole Western Hemisphere. Oof. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, reveal his uh, pinky in the brain like scheme uh, yeah, yeah. that that he was afraid to say for fear of uh, retaliation. Right. But basically, we uh, send all the pipe hitters that I trained up uh, to capture <laughs> all these Uber billionaires. We take all their money. Yeah. Space Force. And now, because you notice in any sci-fi that's worth its salt, the world is united by the time that they punch out into space. It's true. So they, we need a united federation, galaxy, alliance, whatever. Right. Like, right. You were about to say united federation of planets, weren't you? Almost. <laughs> Let me tell you, one of the things in the Star Trek universe, before you were allowed entry into the federation, you have to have one unified world government. There's only one time in which they made an exception or almost made an exception, and it turned out to be a fucking debacle. Debacle. D. All the bockles. Because there was just, there was a bockle full of race war and it did not turn out well. No shortage of bockles here. No shortage of bockles here. (laughs) So yes, we steal all the rich people's money and then we create a bomb ass space force and then Mike is the ambassador to the hot alien babes. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Might as well be the vice president. I'm with it. It's like the man said, earth girls are easy. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye. If you have a batshit crazy story that you want us to read on the show, shoot us an email at info at popsmokemedia.com. Also, check out our social media. You can shoot us DMs there. Stay up to date on all the latest Smoke Pit news. Also, check out our merchandise at popsmokemedia.com. Give this podcast five stars. We'd appreciate it. And share it with your friends. 